Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome to another Sky and Creation Kit tutorial video. Today we are going to be dealing with containers, so it's another scripting video. It is the eighth in my scripting tutorial series. If you haven't gone and seen the other videos, then I recommend that you go and check those out. It will sort of teach you the basics and work your way up to this point. So I'm not going in any specific order with these scripting series uh, mainly now. It's just anything that I, I feel I want to do or anything that you guys might want to suggest. But today is going to be all about containers. So I've got three things I'm going to do with containers. I thought I'd pull this into one tutorial and into one script actually. So it's going to be the first part which is restricting an item from going into a container. So say you could have a small strong box and you wouldn't want people to be able to put armor in there or massive weaponry. You can do that. The second part is going to be about moving items from the container you put them in into relevant locations. So in this case I'm going to allow the player to add a clothing item and it will automatically send it to the wardrobe. So this would work as something like an auto sort system that you might see in a couple of other mods out there. And the third part of this is going to be enabling items. So you might have seen my developers video of Corinthia Tower where I have a display case and when I activate I can activate certain items within the display case. I can appear to put items into it so I get nice big static weapons appear in the case as I add them to the container and when I take them out they're sort of disabled. So I'm going to show how to do that. So as I said go and check out those other scripting videos because I'm not going to recover a lot of things in this like making scripts. I've already gone ahead and made myself a wonderful little test cell. What I will do is I will provide this on my website for you to go and download and take a look at the script yourself and how the system works but we will check this out when we've done it and I've pretty much already set this up so I'm going to guide you through it here I've got a chest which is going to be where we put all the items in so we're going to go up to this we're going to place items in it's either going to throw them back at us or do something else we've got some armor here which is static so this isn't going to move and something else I will mention just quickly is how to stop items that have been taken from miscellaneous or whatever else if it's an item with havoc which this usually is a piece of armor and you want to make a static version you are always best to hit don't havoc settle and also add a little default script to stop it from moving at all which is the default disable havoc on load and set these two properties uh, without the tick boxes that'll stop it from moving so I've got that piece of armor so when I put the armor in that container it's going to appear on the side and when I take it out of the container it's going to disappear so it's going to look like I'm placing it on the side so that it can't move so it's it's there for display and I could do with it um, you know do it with a number of other items but I'm just going to do it with armor and then over on the left here is a wardrobe so when we place clothing items into that container it's going to go over and uh, put it into the wardrobe and this will work for any mod out there that adds sort of custom clothing, custom armors, anything like that because we're going to be working off keywords and not items themselves. So it's going to check if it's got that keyword. So that makes sense in a moment. So if we go here, I have added my own new script which I've called DF127S for scripts container restrict and I'm going to edit the source and I'm going to guide you through what I've written here and how it all works. So I'm going to be using two events, one is on item added and the other one is on item removed. On item removed is only really going to be applicable to the armor because it's something that needs to sort of reverse the process. So we're going to enable it, when we take it out we want it to disable. Uh, the other two are going to be something that just happens once. So you're probably going to find you're going to have a lot more happening in the, the item added section. So in other tutorials we've used like event on activate, that's just when you activate something. This needs to take place when items are added and it needs to detect what those items are and what to do with them. So on item added we've got these sort of little mini properties if you like for the event. And these will, it will know what these are when you state them in here rather than have to do properties for them. These are sort of attached to the event itself. So on item added we've got AK base item. That is the item that's being added so it will know what that is. We've got an int which is AI item count. This is going to keep track of how many of that item have been added. Object reference, AK item reference. This is more specific to the reference of that, that very specific item. So if you don't want to sort of class an iron dagger in general, it's, it's base item and you want to class a specific dagger. So it, it's, there's only one of it in the world, it's going to be that. But I'm not going to be using that at all. Object reference, AK source container. Where the item came from. 
So if you look here, I'm using if statements again, which I've, I've sort of uh, talked about in my other tutorials. We've got AK base item dot has keyword vendor item key. So what I'm doing is I'm going to restrict keys from being added to this container. So you can't put any sort of keys in here and they'll be thrown back at the player. So the way this works is obviously it says if the item is a key or has a keyword uh, of key. So keys all have that one keyword of key. And if you, if you want to list a keyword, go under miscellaneous keyword and I'm using vendor item because it's the most commonly used on things. So any key in the game should have vendor item key on its keywords list. And if it does, that means it knows it's a key and it will do this. It will go remove item, AK base item. So it's going to remove the key that's just been added in. It's going to remove however many of that key have been added in. True is going to make sure that no notification comes up at the top left saying like key remove, key remove, key remove for however many. It's just not going to show that. AK source container. So that's going to be the player in this case because it's coming from the player into the container. It's going to say no, I don't want that. It's going to throw it back at the source container which is the player. And then I'm going to use my own little debug notification. I'm just going to put invalid items. So that will show at the top left. And it's basically going to indicate that keys can't be placed in there. So it's going to go if. If it's a key, then do that. Otherwise, it's going to check and it's go if it has the keyword of vendor item clothing, however. So if it's a clothing item, again, all clothing items should have vendor item clothing on them. It's going to move it. So if you look at this, first of all, sort of restrict, move to, enable. Those are just little notes for me. Those won't do anything to the script. But it's going to go if the sort of item has the keyword of vendor item clothing, it's going to remove item. Again, base item, however many there are, whether it be one or three or however many. It's going to make sure that no notification shows. And then it's going to go DF ref clothing storage. And I've just made an object reference here, clothing storage. And that's basically the reference I have given to my wardrobe over here. So I've given it that reference. So that's also going to autofill as well in the properties. So what it's going to do, it's going to remove the item, however many, and it's going to place it into that wardrobe. And then I've done my own little notification again saying item auto sorted, just to let the player know it's happened. And they should be able to go over to that wardrobe then, and their item should be in there. And then the other one that I've got is my enable one, which is going to go, okay, so if it isn't a key, and it isn't a clothing item, I'm going to check to see if it's a specific item this time. So if the AK base item, item that's added, equal to is armor iron curious. So I've stated that again in armor property iron iron uh, armor iron curious. So if it's a piece of armor, it is going to go DF ref static armor iron dot enable. It's going to enable our iron armor on the side here, which we've got placed down. Again, I've given that that reference and that should autofill. So it's just going to enable that. You could do anything else if you wanted. You could say if it's a piece of armor, you could do, uh, you could make it trade it for steel. So you could remove that and then add steel to the plate and do whatever you want with this. You can adjust this. It doesn't have to enable something. This can be used to do whatever you want. And then I've got my own notification again, just saying item stored. So it's going to say like the armor has been put on the table. And then I've just got on item removed. It adds pretty much similar to this, apart from it just detects when something's leaving the container. So I've got, if the item being taken out of the container is the Iron Curious, then I'm obviously not going to want it to appear on the side. And it's as simple as that. It just goes static armor iron disable. So that's how my script is laid out. Now, if you were going to do auto sort, you would obviously need to account for every type of item. So you would go if it's animal hide or if it's got the keyword of animal part, armor, arrow, book, and then direct it to different chests. You would have to specify the object references. So if you go in here, I've auto filled already and it's filled in all my properties because they're all under the right names. So you would have to make a keyword for each of these properties for them and state them and just send them in different locations. So you'd have to have an object reference for say your clothing items, like your wardrobe and a reference for say a stack of shields or whatever else it might be. So you're not limited to vendor items under keywords as well. You can use others. There are other keywords. So you've probably got um, armor types. So you could say if it's a piece of jewelry, if it is steel, then send it into a steel section. Play around with it and do whatever you will. So, But that's how mine's going to work. And all we're going to do now is we're going to go in game and we are going to see it working. 
Okay, so here we are inside of our custom cell. And as you can see, we've got the chest here, which we'll be placing the items in. On the left is the wardrobe, which is completely empty at the moment. And then you've got the area on the left, which has the armor initially disabled. So remember that if you do want items that are going to be placed in the chest to enable, then have them initially disabled. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bit of a mess. So we're going to open the chest first of all, and we're going to try placing a key inside of it. And as you can see, it says invalid item, as it should do. And it's not gone in the chest, and it's back inside of our inventory. And then if we go ahead and place some clothing in there, that has got item auto sorted. The chest is still empty, and it has placed it into the wardrobe on the left. And then if we go in the chest a third time, and we place in some iron armour, it makes it appear on the left hand side. We can open up the chest, take that out, and it disables it. So it's as simple as that. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please leave comments, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you're going to use this sort of script in any of your own mods, whatever that might be. Also hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out my main website and my anti-social websites. Everything's going to be in there, sort of uh, including the resource. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.